Hello YouTubers and welcome to part 8 of Feed the Beast Minecraft. In our previous video we discovered how to make an electric wrench which I of course do not have on me right now because that would be crazy. Today we are going to be covering how to make the drill and the chainsaw as well as a few other things you may need to know about a couple of the mods. Now if I can remember, oh there it is. So this wrench if you remember allows us to add and remove the industrial craft items without having to worry about breaking them. So all you have to do is just shift, right click, and it will pop the item off and you will get it back. I'm just going to put that back because I actually do want that. So today we are going to be covering how to make our drills. Now, in our last one, we went over the small power. To make the wrench, we had to use a small power unit. To make the electric drill and the electric chain and the chainsaw, we're going to need the larger power unit. So the recipe is very similar. The only difference is, is you need two additional batteries. Now I have gotten most of the items constructed. I am just getting on to building the last item. And that is of course the uh, electric motors, which is just pretty simple recipe. Just these two, two of these, and finally two tin casings. So yes, I am building two. So we'll just bring the recipe back up and finish these now i personally really like the drills because all you need to do you just need to recharge they don't really cost you in the much of the turn of resources Ooh, we actually didn't do one final thing and i apologize i forgot to roll those out so we're just gonna have to wait a moment for those to finish unfortunately cannot seem to get anything going today right our core is still going away. I'm, I'm going to have to look at upgrading how to power that because those tiny little things are not nearly enough power. So we'll probably be looking at that in a later very, very shortly. I'm just going to bring this back up. All right. Now I have everything. So always that one last thing. Two. Two of these. And finally, batteries. So now the recipes for making the... Oops, sorry. The recipes is just you need six iron plates for each the chainsaw and the drill. So I'll just do the chainsaw first. And here we go. So you're going to have to roll a lot of these out. They do take a few minutes. So we have our cool looking drill. Now, this drill will not work on its own. You won't be able to harvest trees or anything like that until... You start powering it and you just power it by throwing it into some power device i'm just using this fat box here but if you have another power source you'd rather use you can of course use that and then to make the drill very very similar just gonna bring it up because i can't quite there you go all you do once again six plates and we have ourselves a drill now the drill works, I believe, at the equivalency of an iron level. So if you want to mine anything that you would use a iron pickaxe for, you can. And while that's charging, we are just going to see this thing work. So all you have to do, just harvest. Works about the same as a regular pickaxe. Nothing really special. The other nice thing, though, is if you harvest, you can harvest all the leaves as well. So you don't really need shears to do this anymore. So if you want to get a bunch of leaves, you can just use your chainsaw. And so if you want to make some pretty sort of hedge, and this applies with most of the other plants that you would normally use shears for. So if we find some grass here, just drops us the grass. No, I actually want those. All right, so our drill should be powered up by now. Just gonna close those gates. Oh, and I finished the wall, by the way. I got the wall all done, all the way around, and it's not done yet, but I have started doing the edging here to prevent spiders from jumping up. So all these are just up down or upside down staircases just placed. I still have a, I'm about halfway done. Uh, just got to do the other half yet. I'm just waiting on some resources for waiting on. Uh, I need to wait on more smelting for that. So if we get our drill now, yeah, I ran out of power. So we're gonna put that there instead. And this will mine. The nice thing is you don't have to switch between a shovel. And a pickaxe, you can just mine everything. We have some cobblestone here, mine that. No problems at all. So I really, really like using the drill. And if you have the diamond, I highly recommend you can actually upgrade this drill. 
There is a downside to this, though, in that the drill... Oh, that's weird. Not sure why it's not working, but the drill does not have as many uses. I think it needs to be lower power, actually, which is unfortunate. So I'm actually just going to pause quickly and drain a bit of the power out so you don't have to watch me just mine every single one of these blocks. So I'll be back in just a second. All right, so I just checked, and I realized the recipe for this is actually changed to use this uh, iron turning blank, which uses this turning table. Uh, we're not going to be getting into this today. We're going to be just moving on. We'll be looking at this at a later time once I you know, figure out how to use it. So uh, as I was saying, though, the mining drill will work at um, tier one. It will mine, I believe, everything that an uh, iron pickaxe will mine or lower. So it, it will last for quite some time. Now, I'm sure you've seen these in previous videos. and You're probably wondering, what on earth are these things? Well, these are the ender lilies. And I was waiting until they got to the mature point so I could show you. So you, these uh, are not craftable in any way, shape, or form. Uh, they are used in several recipes. They grow very, very slowly. And they will hurt you if you walk on top of them, which I don't really want to do. So I actually think I just put this back to... No, it's not easy. So what you want to do is you just want to right-click on, on the ground somewhere, and it will grow very very slowly this will take several in-game days but once they're done you just click on them and they will return to you one lily seed and one ender pearl so ender pearls can become a renewable source of uh, ender pearls and it, it makes things quite nice so you don't have to go hunting endermen as much so as you can see i've gathered a few i found a few in um in dungeons and chests and whatnot and the next thing we're going to take a look at is something I've been kind of glossing over, or not glossing over, I've been actually ignoring completely, are these berry bushes. You probably have seen while mining. And these are pretty cool. So these ender bushes can just be planted on any surface. Uh, they will hurt you if you run into them. And they will slowly, slowly grow. And they will actually be capable of returning berries, which I didn't grab. And those essence berries return um, uh, experience, and they can also be used for some other things. So they return their respective uh, items. So a gold berry bush will return gold or berry. And these can be crafted. Or these are used for crafting, but they can also be used to make they can also be used to make nuggets, which eventually can be turned to make ingots. Now these things grow slowly. However, you are able to expedite that process by using watering cans. I believe it's right here. Something I want. So you can either use stone or iron to craft this. I think we're going to use the probably the stone one. That looks a lot cheaper. So the stone one, all you need is to build. Just grab three of these, and that will give you four bowls. Bowls you can use to make soup, and you can eat from it. And I think I have I have stone somewhere around here. thought it was there. It's probably in here. Perfect. We have stone. And that recipe back up. And we just... Oh, that's it. So the recipe is this. And this. This gives us our watering can. Oh, peaceful mode only. Shoot. I just need... I don't really see the point of having a peaceful mode recipe. It's kind of weird. Oh, it's because I'm not in peaceful mode. So it's just bone makes your bone meal. Like this. There we go. There's our watering can. Now on its own, this doesn't do anything. What you need to do is you need to find a water source. And... And you just click on the water source. I think it's just left click. And then you right click on your berries. And they will start growing. Here. Just, they do take a minute sometimes. Here we go. That's what I was waiting for. So once they're ready to go, they will have these uh, glowing berries on them. 
you just right or left click and it'll return I think between one and three and you can do two things with these you can keep them and you can actually make them into mob essence later which we'll be looking at probably in a few videos or if you're desperate for more XP you just right click to consume and as you can see we gained a bunch of experience there the other are varies they're not you know consumable there is a word of caution to these these cannot while these can be planted on the surface they need to be oh, actually they can I think they need to be planted on yeah they need a certain light level so what you're going to need to do is find a very very dark corner let's we'll dig down a little bit to show you and we're going to close them off here so it's very very dark in here and you can plant them and you can Throw a torch down. So as you can see, little ore bushes there. We're gonna just right click the watering can. I think we can use this to grow it, or at least very, very slowly. There it goes. So it does take a few moments, but eventually, there it is. It will return this these pieces of aluminum, Oops. which you can then use to craft any of the other aluminum recipes that you'd want. So it's just kind of a cool thing to know. Uh, we'll be looking at making a farm with that because having a farm of those, and especially once you automate it, becomes incredibly, incredibly useful. All right. Now, I think, yes. Uh, the next thing I want to take a look at is, as you know, we have all this macerated ore here, and I think it might be time to take a look at our ore washing center. Or, or washing plant, sorry. And this is a bit of, an, a bit of items you're going to need. You're going to need iron plates, a machine casing, two motors, and a circuit, and two buckets to make it. And I am going to start getting the materials ready, so I'll be back in a moment with that recipe ready to go. All right. I believe I have everything together to make our ore washing plant. So I'll just bring the recipe back up. So iron plates, a machine casing, two motors, and a circuit, and two buckets. Oops. Bring this. So we had this here, three of these, two buckets, two motors, and a circuit. There we have it, our ore washing plant. Now, the ore washing plant does require quite a lot of power. Oops, so we're just going to give it a hook up here. So, as you can see, it requires 16 units of power per tick. All right, so the ore, washes, ore washing plant, what you would do is you put, let's take a random ore here, and then we'll throw it in here. Nothing's happening. That's because you need water to make this thing. So what we're going to do is I have a little stream right here, or a pool of water here. And I'm just going to get a bunch of buckets. And then you just open, right-click back on this to open it up. And you can start putting it in there. And as you can see, this thing is starting. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a very tedious process, and I am not going to want to do this repeatedly because it takes a long time. So we're just going to fill this thing up so it has water ready to go. And this thing will, will not run those water. So we get an opportunity to see what's dropping here. So we get purified crushed ore. Tiny pile of gold dust and stone dust. And if we bring up the purified crushed ore, this can be smelted down. And we can also, we're going to want to eventually throw it through this. This just has a massive power requirement. And we're just going to let that start running. And I'm going to show you how to get a pretty cool way to get water. There's actually two things here. So the first thing you're going to want is you are going to want thermal expansion storage tanks. And you're going to just want to make a portable tank. So it's a piece of copper surrounded by four pieces of glass. So let's see if we can go do that. Glass. I am actually out of glass. Wow. So we're just going to have to smelt a teeny bit. Two, three, four. And the other thing I think I'm going to make... Actually, you don't need these quite yet, but you can make these for now. Is These are two copper and one lead, and these allow liquids to be carried. 
just may as well while it's running. Uh, lead. I usually don't like the opaque ones. I prefer the transparent ones. Functionally, I'm pretty sure they're the exact same thing, but the liquid ones look a lot cooler. So what we're going to want to do is on the top of this, I'm going to put it like this. And that's still going. The furnace should be done our glass. So we're going to take one here. And these tanks are really cool because they can be done well portably. So let's just bring this tank over to our water supply here. Just right click it on the ground. Get our buckets back. Oops. <laughs> that was too fast. I should probably actually make it three by three here to get it better. And I will just use the three here to demonstrate. So you just right click on it to fill it up. And then to disassemble it, all you're going to need is some kind of wrench, Billcraft, the thermal expansion one. You hold shift, right click to bring it back up. And as you can see, it still has our three buckets of water in there. And now you just, you're just going to do that. And to empty this, so right now the blue means fill. You right click with your wrench and it will empty. Now this thing, yeah, it's run out of power. That is the downside as it does have a large power requirement. We are going to need more power very, very soon. Oh, it's actually the one I wanted. So I'm actually going to grab a lot, the 16 here. It will be daytime soonish. So we'll, once that happens, we'll get some more. I'm just going to throw that in there. And that should allow this thing, oh, it's starting to boot up. So one thing about these uh, ores, they, they are going to fill up these slots pretty quickly. So you're going to want to keep an eye on it. If these slots are filled, it won't do anything. The next thing we're going to need is the Oculus Accumulator here. So this requires a machine frame of some kind. So I'm pretty sure just the basic machine frame will suffice. Seduction. I am terrible at finding stuff in here. Apparently. here. So basic machine frame, two pieces of glass, one bucket, two copper gears, and a servo. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pause while I get everything so you don't have to watch me build or watch me do all this. So hold on for a second. Okay, so this recipe, here we go, is our Oculus Accumulator. Uh, the gears, if you remember, are just uh, one iron with four copper around them. And uh, where's the, here it is. So again, thermal, one iron, four copper. This pneumatic servo is just a redstone, two iron, two glass. Uh, bucket to us and there's different kind of machine frames just this one you just need the basic which is a tin gear four iron four glass so and this was you can build different kinds of gears you can do this one or i think i just use the uh thermal expansion i think i just made this one but it doesn't really matter they're all compatible so what will this thing do for us so we're going to need a little bit of dirt here to make this work and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put this right on top like that and we're just going to put this to fill mode for a second and just need an outside wall here i actually do not think i brought enough dirt with me the first time i don't have enough dirt on me usually i can't get rid of the crap So you will need a little bit. Now the Oculus Accumulator, as true to its name, all it does is just slowly accumulate water. It's actually an incredibly slow machine. Thankfully, we have better options. So all you're going to want to do is around it. You don't need the corners. You just more or less need these sides here. And I'll get rid of the other pieces later. 
That should be good. You're going to want to take your bucket and just give yourself four buckets of water. And you can accelerate this process by just putting water buckets around. So dirt, whenever it rains, and I believe just slowly over time, it will just accumulate. It outputs to all sides and just kind of absorbs water. I'm just going to take the back off or the bottom part off. I think all you really need is two here. But as you can see, we're getting water very fast. It'll drain out to the bottom, which of course is our little thing below it. Now, you don't need to use that uh, tank here. I just like having a bit of a buffer zone. Now, we won't be able to see it. But you can see in that little image along the top that it is filled. And oh, we just got just to gotta switch it to output mode. It will stay on there. And as you can see, it's just filling up with water. So now we have our wonderful ore washing plant giving us lots of fun other things. So. With this, you will now be able to have a little bit more gold. So you're going to get these tiny piles of gold dust, which you can craft into just regular gold dust. So you get an extra bit of gold, and the stone dust we'll be using probably not for a little while yet, but I will show it to you. Now, I think that's all the time. I realize there's a lot of interruptions in the video today, so I do apologize for that. As always, if you enjoy my videos, please like and subscribe. Any and all comments are appreciated. Until next time, this is Lefa Launchka saying cheers, folks.